Okay. So to uh, Craft the Leather is a project that we've been doing now for a good many years. Um, it was running along very happily until we had to cancel, uh, until the world got canceled. But then we began a, a virtual platform and this platform has been able to connect all, all of these schools, most of whom took part in workshops in Tuscany or in hosted workshops in their own schools. Uh, and then uh, these are also people who are represented here today. So if um, maybe the guests who are here could introduce themselves to, or maybe Ellie, you start explaining where we are, okay. um, where your students are from, and then we can kind of just say who we are and where we're from. Right. Thank you, Diane. So, uh, hello, good afternoon, good evening to Tokyo, uh, good morning to the States. So, hello from Jerusalem, I'm Ellie Ginsburg, and uh, I'm representing here with my students the Betzalel Academy in Jerusalem, Academy of Art and Crafts, uh, which was established 150 years ago. Um, I think uh, we have nine uh, departments and two, about 2,000 students, about 350 lecturers. I'm from the Department of Jewelry and Fashion, and we do all around the body. What does this mean? We do um, jewelry, we do fashion, um, we do uh, glasses, accessories, shoes, and in uh, this context here, uh, we are showing uh, the products of the super um, specializing course for vegetable tanned leather. Actually, we're working with this kind of tanning of leather um, three decades. But uh, in the last three years, we have a specific course dedicated to this gorgeous material. Thank you. Um, okay, I don't know, do we go geographically? <laughs> How do we? <laughs> I mean, I wanted, no, may, maybe I wanted to, 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 to thank, but saying thank you here is not enough. I appreciate, recording in progress. I appreciate so much the possibility to participate, to join this community. And I want to say thank you to the Consortio Vera Pelle Italiana Conciata al Vegetale and the group of the Craft the Leather uh, project and of course, Diane, Barber, uh, Diane, Barbara, Giorgio. And uh, thank you to, to all the people who, of the community who wanted to join us today. René, Troy, Marika, Mr. Hiroshi, Yana, uh, Sarah, Aki. Um, and I want to thank my head of our head of department, Mrs. Shelley Satat who is not with us right now, but she will join later. That's it. Okay, uh, let's see, maybe Troy, do you wanna give us two words about who you are? Yeah, hi, Diane. Hey, everyone. Hi, I'm Troy Nachtigal. I'm the Chair Professor of Fashion Technology and Research at Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, where I work mostly with the fashion program at AMFI, but data sciences programs and all kinds of technology programs as well, looking at the old and the new at the same time. Super. Rene? Uh, hello, I'm Rene van der Berg. I'm uh, from Holland. Um, a little bit about my background. I'm an orthopedic shoemaker. Uh, I make shoes to measure. Did a lot of shoes for fashion shows. And currently I'm hosting 
uh, 30 plus uh, students in my own academy, which I uh, started about two years ago. Super. Uh, Aki? Hello. Hi. Sorry. Hello. I'm Aki, Aki Chocolate. It is my real name, by the way, because everybody always asks. I'm from, uh, I, I'm currently the chair of the fashion accessories design department in Detroit, and we specialize in footwear and handbags and other things that adore the body. Nice to be here and thank you for the invitation. And I've done, by the way, uh, all forms of this uh, uh, Vera Pelle courses. So I'm really happy to be here. Super, Sarah. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Mullins. Um, I'm the assistant chair of the footwear and accessory design department at the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. Um, and yeah, I've been involved with Craft the Leather since 2013. And I love everything they do, I'm a big supporter. And the students always do incredible work. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you all have done. Thank you for having me. Super. Marika? Hello, everybody. Uh, um, I'm Anne Marika from Pluch Chasse. Um, I grew up in Switzerland, but I've been here in Brooklyn for 20 years. I'm a shoe and boot maker. And I've also been really lucky to teach at the FIT at the, uh, with Sarah in her department as an instructor and also at RISD at the Rhode Island School of Design in the Industrial Design Department for the past eight years. And I think I was, was that seven years when I was uh, in Tuscany with, with uh, Ellie for Craft the Leather and it was an eye-opening experience. And I've ever since I've been promoting and, and pushing my, my students to try out this fantastic materials and, you know, think, think, think bigger than just, just um, objects, but also materials. Super nice. Um, Hiroshi. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Hiroshi, Hiroshi Sako. My title is Education of uh, Educational the Director of the Hikomizuno College of Jury from Japan. So uh, I'm very happy because uh, we also are seeking the possibility to have in uh, this workshop in Japan the next fall. But uh, not only that reason, uh, our school and um, uh, my school and the US school that had an uh, inten uh, inten exchange programs. So we are very much impressed by the, uh, in past, we are very much impressed by the, that you are talented and uh, uh, diligent student. So as for now, uh, we have to, to stop. We cannot invite the, any student from outside of the country, but sooner or later, we will restart the exchange program. So if you have an, uh, something interesting and uh, hope to stay in the Japan, we would welcome please uh, consider about the you know, possibility to come to Japan in the future. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. So uh, quite a few members of Hiroshi's staff are here. Um, I don't know if they want to just quickly say hello to, and then we can get, we have a lot of student presentations today, so I, we'll, we'll get to them. Okay, I see Barbara is here from the Consortio and also Giorgio. So we have the, a really wonderful international roundup for today as well. So today we'll be looking at the projects that came out of this Craft the Leather collaboration and Elliot, you can take it away. If your students already have their, their order of how they're going to present. So I just want to say the program for, for today, if they are uh, 15 or 16 students presenting short presentations of about uh, mm. three, four minutes. Uh, after the presentations, uh, we might have a few very, very short films uh, showing the work they had done. At the end of the presentations, 
of the students, I will show a few, a short presentation with three uh, very short one minute every film, uh, showing what uh, we are specializing in and actually working processes. I think for the teachers here and for the students, it will be uh, very interesting to see. So just a taste of what we do with veg tan leather in shoes, uh, how they look, the technologies, and how the work is done. I think the first one can begin, please. So just one word, um, it's, this is not a formal crit. Um, the students have already finished their uh, formal part of their uh, presentations. But if you have comments, to put in the chat so that the students can see them later. If you have questions though, um, please pop up and, and ask your questions. So uh, we won't be going around for comments from everyone after each presentation, but also it's really nice to give some feedback since we're all here. So, uh, okay, in that case, I'll stop my share and... Tehila is the first one to share. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is, I'm just going to get this ready before, sorry. Um, my name is Tahila Goldman, nice to meet you all. I'm really excited to be here. Um, here we go. Okay. Um, uh, we did this in collaboration with the Craft the Leather workshop that happened online. The first of the projects that we did was a lamination construction, which we just glued uh, pieces of sole leather together and shaped them off. Here I just made a simple pebble. Please tell me if there's any technical difficulties. Uh, no, it looks good. It looks perfect. Okay. Uh, here in the workshop, we learned how to take egg whites and uh, cream to block out coloring uh, when using aniline coloring. Here's just a little bit of what I did. Continuing in craft the leather workshop, I made a pattern for a hammer and finished it off with a cross stitch. Um, here we had a short um, taste of a Canadian artist who showed us how to make um, leather look like bark. So here's some close-ups of that, you know, coloring it, uh, making the textures. Here's another um, item that I made using the same technique, but here I finished it off with a saddle stitch. Um, in my last project, my final project, I called it Get a Puzzle. Um, going into this project, I wanted to combine childish fun with a practical item. I have always loved three-dimensional puzzles, like a dovetail puzzle, only solvable with one specific movement. There's something about feeling what you're doing and succeeding with your own hands. Then I looked up sandals and I found Tengugeta, hopefully I said that correctly, a one-tooth Japanese sandal with a wooden base. Wearing the sandals is like a balancing game, and I thought, what better to combine? Uh, here are some of the visual references that I took. To the right is a dovetail puzzle, and you see how it can be solved. And to the left, we see the Tengu Geta shoe being worn. First, the first stages was just 3D sketches. sketches. I made it out of Play-Doh just so that I can get an easily formed product. Then I converted it into cardboard to really see how all of the pieces go together and to get a better idea of what I'm making in the end. Um, this is me modifying my mold, my shoe mold, making the shoe uh, wider by adding leather and shaving off the excess. Here you see it over here, this piece of leather, leather sorry. <laughs> Adding two planks of wood to the toes uh, to make a straight edge by the widest part of the foot, um, and then adding epoxy clay to fill in the gaps between the shoe mold and the wood. I did this because I had a part on the top here that needed wet molding. And in order to get that perfect shape, I really needed to modify it for my exact needs. 
So here you see me wet molding, and then to the right, you see all of the layers glued together. This is some photos of my finished project. You know, it's straight on and to the side. Uh, he, sorry, here you see it uh, apart, you know, all the pieces and how it actually comes together. Um, this is a friend of mine's daughter who modeled it for me. Her name is Leia and she's nine. <laughs> uh, we both had fun doing this together. And I think that was what I was aiming for in the end. Here is her playing with it and taking it apart because this is a shoe that kind of works like a puzzle with the movements and the idea of it. Thank you guys so much for listening and <laughs> I hope everyone does great today. Thank you, Tila. Wow, super nice, Tila, super nice. Uh, this is what we call uh, layering construction. This is uh, the material is uh, so leather and there is a whole protocol of how to glue it properly and press it. You will see in the coming presentations. Who's next? Me. Hi, can you see my screen? Yes. Can you enlarge it, please? Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Yella. You are with Rashba. It was pleasant to meet you guys. Uh, for my lamination construction exercise, I made an ergonomic hairbrush made out of sole leather. I glued um, leather pieces together and shaped it to be very comfortable to use in the palm of your hand. Um, and then we had a, a workshop with Giorgio where we learned how to um, use cream and egg white in order to block the aniline paint from um, going onto the leather and doing some surface impressions. And then I made a lighter cover with saddle stitch. Um, for, we had an exercise of connectors I have came up with this little uh, press pin that is made out of sole leather as well. It's only leather, no pin with the metal or anything. And it just works with, um, it works with pressure on a t-shirt. Afterwards, I did a, an exercise with molding. Um, I had this unicorn uh, from porcelain at home and I wanted to mimic it with wet molding, cover it. And this was at home without any tools. We had a bit of a crazy time here in Israel that we couldn't go <laughs> into school because of a war, but I uh, used tools I had at home, including this rack marble I've made and some hair ties uh, to get to this unicorn. I coated the inside with um, glue so it won't change with uh, weather um, changes. Afterwards I tried some tooling on Vaqueta Veg Tan Leather. Um, it was our first time doing it. That was really fun. Afterwards, we learned how to do some biomimicry to make leather look like wood. We used a metal brush um, over and over again and some tools to make the eye holes and some paint to get the mimicry of the wood. Afterwards, I tried some sand tanning <laughs> print. In, on the leather where I just took a piece of paper and did some cutouts and I let it tan in the sun in the window. Um, and I made, covered my hairbrush with it. The color came off a bit while I was rubbing and wet molding it, but I still really like the, what came out. For my final project, I really liked my pin project, so I tried to develop it. Um, 
while I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for my final project. I don't know if you've all heard, there was a bit of a war in Israel and I was trying to figure out everything and what I wanted to do. And I was watching the news and I saw a lot of hate and violence and was a lot of hatred between religions. And it was also um, a lot of men violence going on in the streets, uh, like breaking cars and uh, this is like just what came out of me in my sketches was like three religious women, a Christian, a Jewish, and a Muslim, uh, religious women. Um, this is on a shirt, how it looks. This is the laser cutting I did to get the shape and some of my first sketches for this idea. Um, this is how some of the finishing. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Yela. <clears throat> Who is next, please? I am next. Can I just ask one question? That pinning, um, though, that's actually jewelry. Were those objects that were on on clothing? Yeah, so you can just pin it onto any t-shirt and because of the, um, like there's only a bit of, uh, it's not the word in English, <laughs> the space I left there is just enough for a stretchy t-shirt and it just pins on without any need for any metal. Any other mechanism. Like that. It's made out of sole leather. Yeah, only out of sole leather and glue. Super nice, very nice. Can everyone see my presentation? Yes. Okay, great. Please enlarge it. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Tal. Um, I missed a um, month during the semester because of medical reasons. So I'm going to show you uh, most of my projects I have. Um, the first one is heart shaped lamination construction um, and working process. This is um, card case fitting to credit and business cards. And there is a video here. It was the first time for you to ever touch leather, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is my first time I'm actually touching the letter, yeah. Um, here I wanted to coat um, wooden hammer with a new layer of wood. So I found the letter as good imitation for it. And my final project, um, I cover different stones with leather so I can, um, keep the shape of the letter, but not the weight. This is what I have so far. Um, the chiseled stone can be hung. And I'll show you the working process. Tell me if I'm like doing it too fast. This is epoxy layer inside. This is another layer, um, stone. Would you like to mention the three kinds of stones? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, the first one is the pebble, um, pebble who represents the nature. The second one, it's um, chiseled stone, um, which represents the city. And the, the last one, it's plastic diamond, which I'm still working on, and it represents the, um, the industry. Um, so this is like three things I found interesting um, with Ellie to do all together. Um, and that's all. Thank you, Tan. Thank you. Ellie, just one question, uh, or maybe just background. How much of, of the time did you have students in class with you? 
because I know everybody had different situations. And for the educators, it could be interesting to know what the in-studio, in-home kind of balance was for you. Um, I think most of the time we've been at school, but we had a period of a war and it was embarrassing and frightening. And even if you were home, it wasn't easy to concentrate. But now we're returning to the COVID again. Ah, back to comfort of COVID. <laughs> Who's next? I'm next. Eden. Omer. Elsicha Omer. Hi, hello, my name is, I'm sorry, one second. My name is Omer Goren and- Omer, uh, uh, Omer Justice, okay, thank you. My name is Amal Goren, I'm a little bit sick. So today, Yela, my friend will help me with presentation. And I'm very excited to be here. So thank you, Yala. Hey, hi everyone. Um, so for the first lamination construction exercise, uh, Omer made an ergonomic mouse pad to use for her own computer. Um, she made it with a special place for her arm so it's comfortable to use. Okay, for the craft the leather workshop um, with the wet molding, surface impression, saddle stitch, and and uh, lean die. Um, this is the workshop we did with Giorgio, and this is what she has made. In the tooling process, um, she decided that she wanted to make a case for her sewing scissors. And so after the tooling, she has painted it, uh, cut it, did wet molding, and then ended with a saddle stitch to fit perfectly on her scissors. For the biomimicry, uh, we used the Keta leather and a little um, different types of paint. For her final project, she made a diamond ring for her dad, made out of sole leather brass um, with techniques of lamination and milling. We, uh, she used different techniques that usually are used by um, a, a carpentry people, a uh, world, um, a lot of um, techniques and materials she made a, a Brody knob made for her dad, for her father, because he has a disability in his hand for her, the car wheel. So this is first the starting of the sketching, making the uh, dummy wheel from wood and getting a, a wheel to look exactly like her father's wheel. This is some of the working process. This is a 3D sketch made with a, thermopla a thermoplastic material. And this helped her construct the real leather and doing wet molding and the gluing together. So here we can see the beginning of the process of making the knob, uh, pasting all of the uh, leather together one on top of another, like a uh, lamination construction and a lot, a lot of hammering. Um, for the working process, she used, this is um, usually used by woodworkers um, using a lathe to make a circular knob on leather, which is one of the first times doing this, I think ever. Uh, this is part of the working process, the wet molding and the gluing. Also on the wheel, as you can see, the Toyota wheel, which is the same exact one her father had, and using the wooden dummy. And here is the final project with her father's hand using it, fitting perfect. It's with a turning machine. 
Thank you. Hi, um, just okay. Hi, uh, my name is Nitsan, and this is my presentation. So, in the first exercise, I want to do a feather. So, this is a feather made of a uh, saw leather. In the craft the leather workshop, uh, I decided to try to do a name on the leather, the cover for uh, later. Um, so I'm a little bit excited. Um, so uh, this is what I've done. It's with uh, egg white and cream. Uh, in this exercise, I want to do a cover from a vaqueta leather to a hammer. Uh, I'm using wet molding, saddle stitches and tooling. Here uh, you can see the tooling. Um, this is the by Mercury. Uh, I want to do uh, the catalyzer look like a wood. Uh, and this is my final project. This is the two and 3D sketches. Uh, I took the connectors exercise and want to make it uh, like a necklace. Here you can see the working process. Uh, I cut the leather with a laser and then uh, I uh, glue it together. Uh, I made a, I, sorry, I'm a little bit excited. Rivets. <laughs> Rivets from silver, yes. And then I've done wet molding uh, to the necklace to make it be like ergonomic to the neck. Uh, here you can see the uh, coloring and the brushing. Uh, and this is the final results. It can close and open and expand. And this is how you put it on the neck. Here you can see it on a person. And uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity to show you my work. Thank you, Nitsan. Hi, I'm Odelia and... Odelia, please enlarge your screen. Yeah. Hi, I'm Odelia and this is my lamination construction work. And this one is uh, Biomimic Cry wood bag that they made in, on, that I made on Houston shirt of jewelry, uh, white modding. And this is with a workshop of Craft the Laser. I make a surface impression with eggs white and cream and another white modding and side stitch. And this is my final project of connectors. I decided to make a belt a belt with removable parts and a laser connector performing as a buckle. It's made from 100% sole laser using wet molding, soaking the laser in water for 24 hours in order to make it softer and workable. For chipping the laser, I made and worked with a true part wooden mood. For creating the texture on the laser, I use a texture metal plate this was heated just to get warm, pressing it against the damp pleaser. And this is my 4D sketches. And this is working project. This is wooden mold. So I put uh, different parts in the wooden mold and I pressed it and waiting that it will be in the take the form. And this is the front side of my final project after that I color it. And this is the back side. And thank you. Thank you, Odelia. Thank you. Sorry. 
that was that a body ornament oh belt okay yeah belt right. Hi, my name is Eden. oh i'm sorry no I, I i don't know if i missed it it would be nice to see it on a person because the the work is beautiful but you can also lose the idea of scale so it would have been really nice to have seen that also on someone i agree Hi, my name is Eden, and uh, Taylor uh, uh, will present my work. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so in the first project, uh, we see the lamination construction that she did. She made a door stopper, um, which we see on the left. And the right, we see her biomimicry product that we had made all, all of us. Then we see the Craft the Leather online workshop <clears throat> where she used tooling, uh, a saddle stitch, and uh, and Elaine dyeing with the cream, as we've seen before. <clears throat> Sorry. And to cover a hammer and a layer as well. Here we see her final project called Canoe. Uh, the vegetable tan leather, a timeless material, took my I'm reading in her name, took my imagination to a traditional, simple way of life. I combined this with the challenge of creating a connector. So we see the yeah, connector on the bottom and the canoe on top. The working process, process, we see the 3D sketch to the left and a mold she made out of wood to the wet molding on. Uh, here we see uh, the wet molding in the process. She put in uh, the first layer <clears throat> out of the two flesh side in so that we can have both sides of the object be uh, with flesh. Uh, here we see the base in its sketching sketches, uh, the three dimensional sketches. Uh, this is the finished project. It all comes apart and can be put back together and and uh here's the canoe thank you <laughs> thank you and i have a video i want to share with you wait a minute you hear the video no there's no sound no sound Wait. Thank you, Aiden. Yeah. 
Hi everyone, nice to meet you. My name is Nova, just a second. Um, I will go over my presentation quickly. Um, you can see uh, the first slide, in the first slide you can see the first attempts and the exercise in the material that Ellie gave us. Um, this is um, a simple exercise of connectors without the use of additional material. Um, this is uh, the result of the workshop we did together uh, with Giorgio. And uh, there's a painting on the surface, then a white molding and swing on one of my uh, tools. And you can see it here again. This is some tooling exercise. Excuse me, Excuse me. Can you improve your connection? I'm sorry, just a second. נובה, מה קורה? נובה, אנחנו נותנים לך את האפשרות להתקדם עוד פעם, ואנחנו נלכת לנקודת האחרון. אוקיי, אז אני רוצה לדבר עכשיו? אם זה אוקיי, כן, בבקשה. כן, תודה. Um, just a second. I'll go back. Um, this is a vinegroom. Vinegroom. Um, it's an uh, ancient technique that Ellie uh, told us about it. Um, actually, it's uh, vinegar and um, iron. I put them together so for a week and a half. And it just colored the leather in black, as you can see in the video. And this one is from the biomimicry. Um, and they use it to um, wet molding on an actual tree. It was uh, very interesting to see how it's uh, getting along. And then I, um, I started to work on my final project. Um, in my work, I try to understand what material is and feel it. Um, in my opinion, a work renovates when a translation from one language to another takes place. Uh, the greatest beauty I found in the work of art is the delicate relationship between the ident identification that the viewer feels for the work and the way in which this identification will be near. While working in the course, I became familiar with new material and explored it free of functionality. But in attempt to show multiplicity and unity in a materialistic way, through dimension, form, and feeling. So I'll go back. Um, I use leftovers and with my friends. Um, this is a Bela leftovers. Um, this is a, a quote for my Heraclitus of uh, Epos. He said the, the one is made up of all things and all things issue from the one. Uh, I loved it that he tried to summarize the whole world into one sentence and I tried to make a, in, my interp interpretation. And I love the necklace <laughs> uh, that I, uh, I found inside it. Um, so I took my friend's uh, leftovers, I uh, glued them, and in the, uh, without 
any specific uh, planning. And then in the sending machine, they were born. So um, I like the shapes, they're interesting. Um, you can see here um, more. And I, I think that uh, the one parameter I took care of was the con contradictory uh, in the sending of both, both sides. Uh, one side is smooth, it planned and unified, uh, mm -hmm. while the other side reveals the truth. Uh, it's just uh, layers of leather that are glued with contact glue. Um, so I let them be what they wanted to be. I wanted to, that the, the leather and I will be friends. So I let them let it do whatever it wants to do. Um, I'm sorry, the video is a bit, uh, <laughs> but I like the, the shapes that they get out of the of the material without any help, maybe a little help. And um, you can see in this picture um, how many you can find in one piece. Um, that's it. Thank you. Okay, so Shani will be um, doing her project next, but she has some internet problems, so I'll be taking over. Um, here we go. Uh, this is her elimination construction. She just made a block sanding off the sides to make it angular. Uh, here was our connectors project where she made a puzzle. Um, afterwards, this was in the craft the leather workshop with Giorgio, where we made lighter covers. This was her lighter cover. Uh, another photo of this. Afterwards, uh, she did some tooling. And uh, this is what she did. You see a, a bunny in the middle. Uh, this is during uh, our biomimicry where we worked with mimicking uh, wood. Here is her working progress for her end product, which was a whiskey flask cover. Uh, here we see more of her in the tooling process and how she did it. Uh, and why, why, she do, why did she do this? She put together the things she likes from parts of her life. One part being her workplace. Currently, she is a barmaid and she has a good time doing it. Second part being tooling. Just during the process, she found out that she really enjoyed it. So that's where the design for this cover came from. And then she's going to continue it onwards. So here is to be continued. Thank you. Thank you, Tila. Who's next? Uh, Eranit will be next. I will be presenting for her. It's just a second. So uh, the first exercises were the elimination um, project. Please, please enlarge the screen. Sorry, is it not? Can you please enlarge it? Yes. Is it now? Is, is it yes. okay? Yes, thank you. So uh, the first uh, exercises where she made in the lamination construction, she made um, a clip, a laundry clip, it functions. In the biomimicry, she um, made her own tool um, because it was a stressful time. It was uh, the war going on and uh, she, she had to make her own tool to work with. She made it out of, um, popsicle sticks and nails. Here she, she experimented in the Craft and Leather online workshop with Giorgio. She experimented with the egg whites and cream 
and she made uh, uh, the lighter cover with saddle stitch. Uh, her project, Identity, she wrote, in this project, I focused on the social critique I get. Sometimes I, I am perceived as a sociopathic girl. In my opinion, it is the opposite of who I am. She named it uh, Identity because she feels that even though the way she perceives herself and other perceive her, they're, they uh, contradict, but they are both part of her own identity. She made a 3D sketch um, made out of uh, a transparent tape and she used a pre-casted uh, pre uh, face last. Um, this is the material laboratory uh, where she tried different method of hardening the leather from the inside. Um, to the left is the epoxy. Uh, in the middle is hot water. She used um, 87 Celsius <coughs> um, <clears throat> degrees Celsius uh, hot water. And to the right is gelatin. She decided to go with the gelatin in the end because this is the uh, traditional way of hardening. She used uh, belly leather um, and she used no tools, only her hands to wet mold it on the last. There's uh, the burnishing process. She used a, a piece of canvas and she damped the surface of the leather and just rubbed it to get this shine onto it. Here's the hardening progress process. Uh, she wetted the inside first and then applied the gelatin. And to the right, you can see she tied it onto the last after applying the gelatin is in the elastic fabric and just laid it there to dry. For the second mask, she, uh, she had to change the last to have some facial expression. And she used the thermoplastic uh, material to give it some features and to, um, to smooth it out, she used a putty made of um, dusted leather and glue. That's what you see to Well, start. dust from the grinding machine. Yes, the, left, dust, the left leftovers. Dust. Yeah, okay. Um, here she uses, she uses uh, Play-Doh to make a 3D sketch also for the frame of, um, of, the, of the masks. She glued, the, glued them all together and she used a cardboard reinforcement on the frame so it will be stiff and won't move too much, especially with time and uh, weather changes. So this is the final project. As you can see, it's, uh, she uses a hinge to connect the two pieces together. So one can change the position. So sometimes the faces face each other and sometimes they face outwards. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Neta, it's very nice to be here. Uh, so one moment I'll start. Um, so for the first project, I've decided to uh, examine uh, 10 leather and its uh, possibilities. I was intrigued um, 
if it will be able, able to be hard enough to cut. So uh, I wanted to uh, make a, a pair of scissors. Um, uh, eventually, it wasn't hard enough, but still it was a very fun project and a nice experiment. Uh, so this is the sketches and here on the left is the pattern uh, with which I've worked with. Uh, the first, the second project is, um, uh, I've called it growing hammers. Uh, I took two old hammers and uh, two uh, branches and uh, wrapped them with uh, vaqueta um, leather. And uh, I did uh, wet molding to um, uh, get the, the branch, um, um, forgot the word, um, touch. Um, and uh, um, texture, texture exactly. Maybe <laughs> feeling you wanted to also the the tactile the tactile thing. Yeah. Um, the third project uh, is um, eyeglasses. Uh, I thought um, uh, leather is a much much more compatible material to make uh, uh, eyeglasses than um, uh, plastic because it's, uh, it's much more, in my opinion, a uh, um, nicer uh, uh, touch for the skin. Uh, here uh, are some uh, 3D sketches for the connectors. Uh, eventually I did, this is uh, uh, the first try that I made with one layer of uh, leather. It wasn't uh, hard enough. Uh, eventually I chose uh, simpler uh, connectors um, this is also the pattern uh, on the right and on the left, uh, it's the uh, leather uh, during the uh, wet molding process. And here is the final result. Um, thank you. Thank you, Neta. Hi, my name is Gil. Um, the first, um, the first uh, object that I made was a wand that I made uh, uh, with a lamination construction technique. And I also added a ring and a dot silver with goldsmithing. Uh, I had to make a uh, especially long uh, drill so I could add a uh, road in, in the object to make it stronger. I made a, a video to show you some of the process. Afterwards, I experimented with coloring, tooling, and surface manipulation. Um, the next project was the uh, biomimicry of wood. I used the metal brush to change the surface of the uh, uh, leather and used the uh, acrylic colors to make it look like a wood. Uh, I finished it off with a st saddle stitch and wet molding, so it will be one, the stick and the leather. Um, and 
my final project was uh, the connectors. Uh, those are my uh, uh, early 3D sketches and the final 3D sketches. And this is my final project. Uh, the name of the project is uh, Transitions. It's a neck piece. I created a repetitive structure based on encounter points between layers of leather. This is how it looks uh, on the body. Uh, I really love the way it connects each other and the way it touches the uh, one leather and one layer to another and also the uh, separating bits of it. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much. לא שומעים אותך. רם? אחרם, we can't hear you. אוקיי. Now you can hear me? Yes. אוקיי. Okay. Uh, I'm so glad being here. Uh, I will start with my first exercise. It's a lamination construction. Uh, I used to make a, a Egyptian battle. Uh, it's made of two uh, services. The, the one is flat and uh, have a, a blue stone it, and the other is 3D dimensional battle. Uh, after that, I made in the craft and leather exercise a cover of a uh, pencil. Um, I used tooling and uh, saddle stitch to make it the cover. After that, I made uh, a tooling exercise with the Vaketa leather. Uh, I made a, a flower. Um, after that, we have an exercise to make the wood look like, uh, the leather look like the wood. Um, because we were, were at home and I didn't have an instrument to make uh, the scratching, I used a stone to make it and it works very well. Uh, after that, I, I had a hammer uh, as, a, as a gift and it's a very precious hammer for me. So I uh, decided to uh, cover it uh, with vaqueta leather. I used uh, the uh, wet molding technique to make it. And this is also a, a, another picture. Um, after that, we make a connector. Um, I, I, I made uh, the last uh, semester uh, a shoes uh, for lavender, lavender squeezer. I uh, continued with, with this concept and uh, make a lavender collector. It's a table uh, accessory. Um, I, 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 I made the uh, cut by a fusion and uh, cut it by laser after that. And uh, um, uh, uh, this is how it looked like with the lavender. Uh, my final project is uh, length, it's a necklace uh, chain. Um, yeah, I made the, the, uh, uh, the, bat, the, the cuts with the leather, with, with leather. And uh, after that, I glued uh, one layer to another. And this is how it looks like the necklace. Um, it has a key that uh, it's, uh, could be opened and closed. Um, and this is how it looks like, it's closed, and that's it, thank you. Thank you, Ahlami. Hi, just a second. Um, oh, wait. Um, okay. Now we're good to go. Um, Stop, enlarge your screen. Please. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. My name is Stav. Um, 
I'm going to show you a few small exercises before a grand finale project. Uh, so this, <clears throat> this is the elimination uh, construction exercise. It's kind of a spiral. Um, and it's the very, very beginning on, of my final project, you will see as we go. Uh, the second one, I did the connectors uh, assignment. I made a hairpin shaped like a turtle. I thought it would be super fun if the hair gonna be the shell of the turtle. Um, and then we tried tooling. And tooling is amazing, by the way, I love it. I'm just in love with that. And uh, I thought what, I want to do something fun with it and do something fashion related. And I decided to make a dress for my Barbie. And I can show you the Barbie. I thought at the beginning to stitch it in the back like we did with a lighter cover, but me and uh, Ellie looked at that and we found that it's pretty interesting and quite fun if we can open it in the back and just uh, take it off the Barbie. Uh, and something very interesting happened because of the tooling, the leather, it quite uh, it became quite dense. So I didn't have to coat it in anything inside and it's very, very hard. Like it's, you can hear it like, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's right on. <laughs> um, and this is my final project. It's, uh, I call it the terraces, not as balconies, more like our agricultural terraces. Um, and it's a tactile chess set. In this picture, you can see different levels of, uh, of making. Um, so um, all of those, all of the pieces were uh, designed in Illustrator and laser cut. Um, in the middle of every piece, there is a, there is a brass, um, there is brass just to focus the weight and hold the glue um, and give it like a little bit of weight so it's not gonna fall down. It's very, it's tiny. So um, I really want to give it more weight and something to keep it together. Uh, the difference between the two, the two teams uh, it's uh, one side is terraced and one side is smoothen. And um, this is the main difference. Um, also the board, uh, if you can touch it, it's also tactile. Um, it have different kind of, uh, not layers, just heights. Like I will show you. Um, this is some sketches I knew from the beginning I like to know what I do, what I'm doing. So I have every uh, every piece drawn, and I decided how many layers I want to do. So it will determine the height of the piece. And this is the pieces. First, the first one is the king. When I think about royalty, I think about clothing, and I chose to reference the Spanish jerkin which is very much a triangle body, ideal man shape. And uh, I just thought it's, it's very suitable for a king. Um, the same here with the other royalty, the queen. I thought I have to give her a big, beautiful skirt. Okay, big skirt with teeny tiny waist. So um, I, I actually gave her skirt and I tried to make them the motion uh, with the, I just tried to make some kind of motion vibe. You know what I mean? Um, and that's it for her right now. That the skirt is moving maybe? It's not moving, it just gives you the, the feeling you know, because it's tactile, when you feel it, you, your hand gonna move with it, you know. And the rook, the rook is the, 
it's the boundaries of the board. And usually the rook is very small. And I don't understand why it's very small because it's basically a tower. It's supposed to be tall. And I think it's beautiful that it's tall. So I made it tall. Um, now the bishop. In Hebrew, the bishop is called the runner. Um, so I made something that, for my opinion, looks like it's running because one leg is opposite, the leg is opposite to the arm and it's, um, it is what it is. It's always look like it's moving. Uh, the knight, uh, in Hebrew, the knight's called the uh, cavalry, um, which means a knight with a horse. Me, basically. So I focused on the horse. Um, and I did kind of, I took them, I took the, the image of the neck of the, of the head and tried to create something kind of similar to a horse. Um, and those are the pounds. Uh, I reference to spearheads uh, because I thought when soldiers go like march together you can only see the spearheads you can't see the individual um, pound soldier um, so this is this is the explain this is the explanation for the shapes uh, the board all like also were laser cut but it wasn't really cut more like burned um, it's only a millimeter um, gap between the upper layer and the lower layer. Um, and I burnished- Between the black and white or brown and beige, right? Yeah. So I burnished only the, the white ones. So it also has the texture difference. Uh, but if you touch it, you feel the difference. No, no doubt. Um, it's just how it works. The laser. Yeah. And this is um, a little bit just a taste about how I did the, the pieces. Um, because I, did, I didn't do one object. I did 33 objects, tiny objects. So I had to number it and um, keep it very organized. And it's beautiful not related to it. Uh, I got a lot of help from my family. It's a lot of work and my boyfriend and they don't want to touch it ever again. <laughs> um, they said I got excited when I actually had two pieces for from everything. I had the team suddenly. Uh, and this is the final one. You can see the upper a picture have the terrace and you maybe think when you touch it it's all about the touch when you touch it you feel the terrace you feel it in your hand and the smooth uh the smooth team that you can see under it when you touch it you feel the smoothness so this is the idea it's kind of weird to do it on zoom that you can't really touch it um trust trust me <laughs> um and this is the smooth theme. This is the terrace theme. Um, and I made you a small video. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we are uh, at the last, no, almost last word. No. Eden, eh, Shachar, sorry. So hello everyone. My name is Shahar Jomen Kindle Ben Simon. <laughs> I hope my English will be well. Um, just a second, what happened here? Okay. 
So uh, first, I want to say thank you for the opportunity for being here for this collaboration. That was really, really fun and taught me a lot. And this is the illumination part. I did small vagina that's made from sole, uh, weather, sole leather. This is the craft and leather workshop uh, with molding and stitching. As you can see, I did uh, a cover for car keys and cover for my grandfather's sculpture. That was really fun because I realized that I can make almost everything I see online on the street. It really makes me happy. <laughs> Pulling. Wet molding again. And biomimicry. I did not have a brush, so I glued uh, a sewing needle to a wood piece, and that's what happened. And finally, my final project. Uh, that's part of the connectors con mission. Uh, first, we will see the working process, the first sketch, second one, and the second sketch on cardboard. Um, so after a few days, I'm working on the this object by my hand. I realized that um, I realized that it's not connecting well the side of the heart. So I started to think about uh, a new idea. Uh, it's because I did it all by my hand, no laser, nothing. So this is uh, the last um, sketch. So this is the end. I will uh, read for you something I wrote. Uh, I wanted to take the connector task one step ahead and to create a love box that holds my and my partner's wedding rings for our upcoming wedding. The outside part of the box made of two layers of foil leather that made on heart-shaped wooden handle. The grooves were then manually sewed with a perzo the inner art is made of double layers of coil leather in a thick of 0 0.7 millimeter. And the inner holds made of coil leather strips that held by a ring made of two layers of coil leather. The entire model was painted and smoothened as part of the finishes. Thank you so much. So. I'll be the last one. Uh, hi, I'm Sean Campagnano. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, so my first uh, experience is an uh, experiment with the uh, leather, uh, where the elimination construction um, the biomimicry and the connectors. Uh, as you can see, this pyramid is made out of two pieces that are sliding together to create this shape. I, in the Craft the Leather um, workshop, I made this, it's a cover for, um, for glass. And uh, I made the uh, pattern by cutting diagonally into the layer and into the leather and not through it. I tried to mimic this um, fallen leaves kind of uh, look. This one I uh, wet molded over a stick that I found and I used saddle stitch. And uh, for my final project, I, uh, I experimented with high-tech leather craft uh, specifically water jet cutting, since I understood from Ellie that we haven't tried it yet. And I really wanted to see what this uh, technique can give me, uh, what, what it can offer me. So I started with the test to see the limits, to see what thickness, for example, because it, it doesn't burn the leather the way um, the, way the laser does. Uh, so I can get to a very high resolution with it. Um, 
but if I cut it too thin, it rips in touch and I wanted to create something very big, something wearable with it. Um, so I couldn't uh, cut it so thin that it will rip so easily. Um, we have tried a few different types of leather that you sent us and um, some of it got stained really bad <laughs> because of the water. Uh, and we found out that the one that was, I think it was fish oil on it, uh, that made the staining less visible um, and the leather less um, sensitive to the water. Um, so we worked with this one. Next, I had to uh, design the lace cutting um, corresponding to the a pattern of the dress which I made before. I had to take uh, to think through everything before the cutting including where and how it's gonna be sewn together uh, because I wanted the pattern to be continuous like around the hemline. Everything had to be thought through before and this is the actual cutting. Um, after I cut it all. Uh, I had to make sure the pieces won't dry, um, like it wave, won't wave when they dry, won't dry, um, um, not straight. So I had to flatten them uh, with two pieces of, of cardboard and some waves on them just to make sure that everything's flat. Um, and also the stains from the water, I, I, um, I hid by actually um, wetting the entire, the entire surface and rubbing the water in a bit so the stains weren't visible anymore. I then moved to uh, thinning the edges um, and sewing them by machine. It was not as uh, easy as you could imagine, even though it was by machine. Um, and the flash side of the vaqueta is not not um, is not soft on the skin, so it had to. I had to make a lining. Um, I used linen, and this is the final result. Uh, to the left is the front, and to the right is the back. This is from the, if you look in the back through it to the inside of the dress and the fastening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. So I see uh, you were the last one, right? Right? Yes. Uh, wonderful presentations. Now I'll uh, share with you Do you see? Yes. Okay, so I wanted to give just a minimalistic glimpse on what we do uh, in our courses of shoe design. Oops, it jumped, sorry. So um, we use very uh, various techniques and sometimes we are interested in the technique, sometimes usually actually in the story. And we always uh, are pleased to learn something about uh, working systems, different ones, combining maybe uh, low tech handwork with technology sometimes. We always use the technology that fits the way of working that we chose. Uh, sometimes we... Uh, meet surprises during the working process, like in this shoe where the idea was to uh, protest against the round, uh, the, the perfection of the round shape. So here we got a vagina. Um, 
And we discovered in time that uh, we couldn't leave it this way. We had to reinforce it with something like gelatin would have helped a lot. Uh, here we have a momentum heel. Uh, the shoe is not leaning on the heel, but the heel has a new purpose. Here, the heel uh, emphasizes the energy of the walking lady. Um, in this shoe, this is called love handles. Um, and it's uh, built on the foot during a certain situation. Uh, you see it's connected down here. The second part goes into the tunnel and closes the foot um, in a complete piece. It's all vegetable tanned leather. This is uh, so leather. Uh, this is vaqueta and that's vaqueta. <clears throat> It's going to be very short. So I promised to show you the lavender shoe. Here it is. Uh, very, very nice work combining together functionality. The function was to squeeze the lavender to get the uh, aromatherapy effect into your feet. And you see the structure. This was a... Uh, uh, programmed with uh, fusion and then milled and the pieces fit fantastically together. There is a certain space in the structure uh, dedicated to put some something in there like the lavender in this case. And here's just a glimpse on the upper made out of coyo, uh, so leather, structured a wet molded on an anatomical shoe last. I guess everybody is curious about this lamination construction. So here is a few images and then I'll show you how it looks like in a film. This is how it looks closely. It's very, very similar to wood we know. That's a moment in the working process. This is a work of Racheli, which is here. Thank you, my dear assistant, Racheli Ben Eliyahu. Um, yes, beautiful. Now I wonder, does anybody have an idea what this is? I'd like to have comments from uh, the audience. I give you 10, what? So this is a bag. What's in there? Why is this a bag for a lady hunter? <laughs> what does a lady hunter need? Well, since nobody says anything, of course, a lipstick. <laughs> right. So how do we do these things? First, uh, uh, how do you call it, plastilina, to, to get the general impression of the shapes. Then um, we created the knife to cut the pieces, glue them together, and wet molding uh, internal pieces. Of course, tying the wet leather after hammering it strongly or properly. This is how it looks like when uh, be before the pieces are put together. The gluing has to be very, very strong. Uh, that's it, but I'll show you now three short films that will give an idea of uh, more of the situation.
That's it. Thank you. Well, I don't hear that because your volumes are off. Maybe we want to talk together, put on your volume. So this is the end of our presentation for today. We are so lucky to have the opportunity to meet, to talk, to share, to enjoy each other on this planet, yes. I would love to, I don't know if anybody wants to say something, to comment, to, to, to share. We wanna say thank you for Ellie for all this help and this opportunity to make those beautiful things we did. Yeah, it's very, really nice to see all the, the work of the students. The, 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 the level of creativity is very high, I think. And execution is also very good. I really enjoyed um, participating. Thank you. Nice having you, and Great having you. I'm always fascinated by how many stories are told. I mean, you know, like you have uh, how many students, 15 students, everybody had a very different take on how to work the material and what they wanted to do with it. And I'm just super fascinated by it. And I just thought also I, I can um, second Renee's comment on really lovely craftsmanship and, and uh, very highly, you know, all the skills that were displayed really nicely done. And thank you for having me. It's such a great, I'm, I'm so, so happy to see all your students work. So it's really cool. Thanks so much. Thank you, Monica. Uh, Troy, you were asking in the chest if the pieces were wetted before. I know they weren't. Oh, especially, it was especially in the laser, laser cutting and etching, because I've done a lot of work in that neighborhood. And I just want to oh, add- Whoa, 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 you're talking so quickly. I can't understand you. Very excited. Um, it was in the laser cutting and etching that I found, I've done a lot of work in that neighborhood. And it really is that wetting technique that was used for the water jet. If you really get the leather nice and wet and you spray it just before you get in the laser cutter, and you really work with the frequency of the laser because the, there's, there's this wood graining effect that happens, but it happens to do with the frequency of the laser because the laser doesn't actually turn on the entire time. The laser fires incredibly quickly, but we're moving at speeds where you can actually start to see that and the graining comes back in. So I was really loving that piece because you but could- Are you telling me that we will not get it burned if we wetten it before? I didn't think about it. It, uh, it becomes a lot less burned. It, it will burn, but you won't have nearly as much because it, that the, the water there keeps it from burning. So Thank you. Thank uh, you for your comment. I learned something. And I, it's something I was really happy to see that because I know how many people struggle with cleaning it up afterwards. And I, yes. I, I have that nightmare. But really, because it's vegetable tan, you can soak it, you can get it wet. I, I mean, I will soak it, leave it like for a day and they're going to work it in a but week. What do you mean? You soak it for a whole day and you put it just so wet inside the laser machine? Not soaking, soaking it, but I have it on MDF and I'll spray it and spray it and spray it and then compress it with the MDF because the MDF kind of helps the, Holds the water. water. Remember that MDF, if you take off the top layer, has holes in it. Yeah. So, you breathe and you can really control your you kind of get the wetness going just right and then you laser etch it and cut wow and new tricks new tricks but yeah i, I love seeing that work because it's it's a it's a really hard one and and i know the disaster that it is and yes you'll never want to do it again or you will really like barbecue afterwards <laughs> thank you uh, very compelling work really great to see that much creativity i'm really really loving how deep and wide some of the students went. You know, there was real depth in some areas and real breadth in others. And that's really magic to see both of those happen at the same class, with the same, with the same group. Thanks. Yes, and I would like to um, congratulate all you students, you know, this year studying, year and a half studying is difficult, but your creativity, you know, outshined a pandemic, a war, and I'm sure personal issues in your family. So it was really, really 
wonderful to see. And I'm glad you're still creating. You've got your grandfathers, your boyfriends, your mothers, your fathers working for you. I like that too. <laughs> Get the whole family involved when you can. Um, so really, you know, you should be really proud that you're staying creative and thought provoking and expressing yourselves. Congratulations. I want to take this opportunity to uh, mention the name of the person who taught me uh, this trick about uh, imitating wood. It was in uh, Canada uh, two years ago. The person is, the artist is, his name is David Trotter. And uh, we were able to do this because of his open heart and his will to share with me his secrets. So here we pass it and we share. This is very, very heartwarming. Thank you, everybody. This was wonderful. Hope to meet you all again in another uh, crafted leather somewhere. <laughs> So thank you very much for having me and uh, uh, I'd like to send uh, my big gratitude and congratulation uh, your great success and I was, I was very much impressed by your you know uh, you know uh, experimental challenge not only the, the idea but also the technical aspect uh, very much I really want to show your piece to my students uh, they could be very much impressed and uh, you know encouraged by the you know uh, your brave and uh, positive attitude, even the, the this uh, harsh realities. So thank you very much for having me. And uh, and one question: so all your students come from the, the same grade, or are these students come from the, the different years, or oh, particularly uh, same? This this was uh, a course of the second year out oh. of four. The things I showed, the images I showed at my presentation are both uh, students from second and uh, third and fourth year. The last film was a graduation project okay. of, the, of the watches. Oh, and one more thing, so how long did you take for this project one project it from the, the beginning experimental exercise till the end of the final pieces well all the course is one semester i'm not talking about the final project with it which is annual but uh, the presentations of the students are all from one semester which is three and a half months oh. the truth is that uh, because of the COVID and things like that, Whoa. so we had an, an extra two weeks. So let's put it this way, four months. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Congratulations. Anybody else? So here we finished our presentation and I have no more words to, to say how much I appreciate all this thing. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Barbara and Diane and Giorgio and the Consortio from Italy. Thank you. Yeah, picture, photo, let's take photos. <laughs> I'd love to get everybody on the same screen, but I guess we have to do a montage. Okay. Because there's a lot of us. Yes. It was a pleasure. Thank you all so much. Um, this material is close to our hearts here in Tuscany, and it's so wonderful to see that its creative possibilities really um, explored in such original ways. 
Uh, as we look at different workshop results from around the world, we see such different approaches. Um, and it's really wonderful to have a material that lends itself to so many different, not only techniques, but cultures and aesthetics. Uh, this is exactly what we hope would come of a craft the leather workshop. So thank you. Thank you very much for all, everything you've done. So thank you, Eliora, for, for hosting us and coll collaborate uh, for this new workshop. Um, I like the, the idea that uh, uh, we tried the way, I mean, we, we found a way to continue our collaboration, uh, even uh, if we cannot meet personally. So this, uh, these online workshops we did with the uh, Bezalel Academy, RISD, FIT, and uh, Rene van der Berg Academy, and all the others um, are a way to, um, to continue our collaboration and to uh, strengthen our connections. So thank you, Eliora, for, for uh, this wonderful presentation. You students, uh, did a very um, wonderful job um, and um, I'm happy I've been here today and I hope we have uh, uh, new um, chances to, to meet again in the future, okay? So thank you everybody. Grazie mille. Ciao, ciao. Ciao a tutti. Ciao. Troy, we are waiting for you here, okay? Excellent. I can't wait to be back in Tuscany. Okay. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, you too, Ellie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we all, we all bye, bye, everybody. Thank yeah. you. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Ciao.